uh, almost occurring simultaneously to Cuba, can't we? Because we've just had uh, an extraordinary uh, election and a new president-elect, Donald Trump, and now the death of Fidel. Now, I'll just give you a quick quote from the president-elect. He has commented on Fidel Castro's death, reportedly branding him, quote, a brutal dictator who oppressed his people for nearly six decades and adding uh, that it, uh, Cuba remains a totalitarian island. What does this suggest to you in terms of how a relationship will develop or progress or not progress between U.S. and Cuba? Yeah, I, I hope that there will be a relationship a very diplomatic relationship between Cuba and the U.S. I think is very um, contradictory for President-elect Trump to make that statement about oppression, where we are living in um, a system of complete white supremacy here in the United States, where black people are totally and completely oppressed, especially now under Donald Trump, is going to get more intensified. So that's one of the issues that I have with this celebration of um, the death of Castro with people talking about he's a dictator, he's a tyrant, um, he oppressed people, and people will excuse that same type of oppression, of, of oppression when it happens here to black citizens. Well, what's interesting, you mentioned, you know, people celebrating. We're certainly seeing mass celebrations in Miami, uh, in, in Cuban neighborhoods, just after the announcement of, of Castro's death. What do you make of that? Why are they so happy? Well, you know, I always look at things from the uh, racial standpoint. I always bring it back to that because that's where a lot of this stuff is founded. A lot of people, you know, when you look in Miami, you see a lot of the white Cubans out there celebrating in Miami because a lot of the people in Miami, the white Cubans, even in Cuba, they were okay with the oppression as long as it was with the black Cubans there. Under Batista, when he was in office, when he was in power, backed by the U.S., backed by the CIA, the oppression was great as long as it was directed towards the poor black Cubans and all the white Cubans and the elite Cubans, they would get some of the wealth and the resources. When when um, Castro came in and said, look, we're not going to have a system like that. It's going to be equal treatment for everybody. All of a sudden, he became a dictator. So I don't like the contradictions as far as that. Because a lot of times, when the white Cubans go over to, Cuba, to Miami, they have been oppressive to the black citizens there and the darker-skinned Cubans. So I always look at it from that standpoint. Well, I suppose we can have a look at his influences, and we've certainly seen a rise of anti-establishment figures around the globe, actually. And if we look at the U.S. as an example, Bernie Sanders um, has certainly inspired people with that socialist agenda. How influential or inspirational do you think Castro has been for that new generation of socialists? Well, Castro has done a lot of great things for African people around the globe. I can speak from it, an African perspective. Um, he helped end apartheid in South Africa. He helped the African nation of Angola gain their independence. He helped the African nation of um, Ethiopia fight wars. He helped African people, African American people here, or offered to help African American people during Hurricane Katrina, when black people were floating up and down the, the streets for a week out here in, um, in the United States. He offered to help. He was turned down. Castro also offered African Americans free scholarships to go to Cuba and to um, get medical training. So he, he has reached out to people like Malcolm X. So um, he's been um, revered in the, the black community globally, I will say that. Well, Tariq, there's so much to talk about. Uh, about it certainly has instigated lots of debate and discussion uh, across the globe. Tariq Nasheed, we've run out of time. Documentary filmmaker and activist, thanks for joining us here on RT. Thanks for your thoughts. Yo. What's going on, family? How are you guys? How y'all doing? It's Monday. I was supposed to do a show yestterday, last night, on Ustream. But it's Monday, and I'm doing an early broadcast. I ain't going to be on here too, too long. I don't know how many people in the chat room right now. The sun is beaming in my face out here, by the way. Um, but yeah, I'm doing a surprise early show right now. A few things I wanted to touch on. I'm glad to have the few people who's already tuning in. You guys are going to see the playback. I put, I put the playback on something. I, you know, I'm trying to keep my videos away from YouTube. What's up, Tombs? And I'm trying to get the Tariq spot that's almost ready. I, I was going to try to broadcast it on the Tariq spot today, but I got to get it 100% positive.
pop and I haven't tested out the stream yet so I didn't want to risk it so I just wanted to chop up game here with the family what's up sister Tubman from Illinois Nation shout out shout out to you I see my son is Sears in the back there me and they're tearing up how many people in the room right now like what oh there's a few people in here 140 something so we're coming on in there Sister Tubman, let me make you a moderator real quickly. Hold on one second. Let me make Sister Tubman a moderator in the room. The boys, they want to come out here so bad. Okay, it's not letting me make you a moderator for some reason. Yeah, um, for some reason, YouTube, I mean, you stream is a little janky. Man. All right, but right now, I'm in St. Croix. I am in St. Croix, the beautiful island of St. Croix in the U.S. Virgin Islands right now. That's where I am right now. I look very tired right now. I look tired than a month ago. Yeah, they want to come out here and tear up stuff and jump down the hill and all this old shit. But, uh, yeah, the video, the video quality ain't janky today. It's pretty good today. Yeah, the video quality is pretty good. Let me show y'all my view. Well, these mosquitoes are a beast out here in St. Croix, by the way. But let me show y'all my view. All right? The view is nice. Sitting right out here by the beach. And stuff. So it's a nice, cool view if y'all can see that. The hotel I'm in, it, it actually used to be a sugar plantation. It used to be a sugar slave plantation. I, I found that out when I got here. I didn't know that until I got here. They were like, yes, we're going to pass the, um, the sugar plantation. Oh, what the fuck? What? Okay. Man. Yeah, it's beautiful out here. Well, look, at, look at my kids. They want to come out here so bad and tear up. Okay, what's all that noise? Okay. I don't know, there's some loud noise in there. Man, look, they are tearing up. Those are my badass kids. Y'all know what? I was at the airport when we got here yesterday, and that's one of the reasons why I couldn't do the show yesterday. Did y'all see my badass kids? When we got to the airport here, um, you know, those scooters that they have that they drive around the airport, those, those little cars that they drive around the airport in where they, you know, you know what y'all know what I'm talking about. I don't know what they call them. But... When we got to the airport, there was a, a one of those little cars inside the airport. And, you know, TJ and, you know, Sia, everything is a toy to them. When the TJ got in the damn car, scooter thing, turned the shit on and started backing it up in the damn airport, about to run people over. I'm chasing him to get it. I end up crashing into the thing and fuck my leg up. So I'm barely walking right now. So I'm chilling. That's why I got them inside. <laughs> so I'm about to take them to the beach out here in a second. You know. So I'm chilling. But a lot of stuff is going on back home. A lot of stuff going on back home. People are talking a lot about the, what are they doing? People are talking a lot about the white supremacist rally and Trump's lack thereof condemning it. He's not going to really condemn it. He came out today and did a real half-assed condemnation of Nazi groups and other racist groups. You know, they kind of forced him to use the word white supremacy, but he turned around and said that he was going to pardon that white supremacist sheriff, Joe, uh, uh, what's his name, out of Arkansas, or is it Arkansas or Arizona, one of those places, the, that, that white supremacist sheriff who got convicted of racial practices, violating civil rights and the whole nine, and they're going to sentence him, and Trump is talking about pardoning him, giving him a pardon, so that just shows Trump basically said to his white supremacist base, I'm still with you. So, you know, they, they send out these little dog whistle messages to each other. And 
this is what we this is where the rubber meets the road, so to speak. They are they have deputized white supremacist militia groups. The the actions up there in Charlottesville and the way law enforcement let it happen and the way Trump is kind of dancing around it, basically in so many words, family, they deputize these people to harm black folks. What they're not talking about, they're talking about the one white woman who died, which was tragic. They're not talking about the black people who got beat up at that damn rally out there. They're not talking about the brother who got his damn brains damn near bashed in. You dig? The mainstream media is kind of staying away from that. See, black folks, we got to understand how white supremacists are on code. And you have white supremacists and white extremists. What you saw out there in Charlottesville, those are white extremists. And there's white supremacists who will actually fight white extremists. Because the white supremacists, the refined ones, they want to stay on code. The white extremists don't want to be on code. They want to be very open about their white supremacist views. So, oh yeah, I saw that Kamala Harris gave that real half-assed condemnation. And don't, and understand, Kamala Harris or Kamala Harris, or however you pronounce it. What's up, Henry James? Kamala Harris is a real slick one. Understand, when, when you look at Kamala Harris, don't be all, look at who brought her to us. <clears throat> She's somebody that they're pushing on us. When I first saw her, I, I, I saw the stench of bed wench, and there's there's some bed wenchery going on there. Don't be fooled by her. The stench of bed wenchery is right on her. Y'all take a look at Kamala Harris's husband. Take a look at her husband. The husband is the other man, not the brother man. So don't, don't let Kamala Harris throw these little token bullshit-ass combinations out. I'm from California. Some of the laws and the bills and the policies that she passed out there, you know, were, were very detrimental to black folks out there. So, you know, she's just playing her role. She's just Obama with a lace front. Don't be fooled by her. Kamala Harris is Obama with a lace front and coochie hair. That's it. They go out here and talk that talk and, and talk real vague and talk about the, the, the things they're going to change or whatever and act like they're down. But they, they they watch their words. They're not going to punish white supremacy and they're not going to help black folks. If you're not going to do those two things, people are wasting your time. Yeah, she don't really identify as, as, as black, black. But understand, if people are not going to do two things, if you're not going to punish white supremacists and you're not going to help black people, Everything else is a time-wasting mechanism. They're wasting your time. Shout out to Brother Ken Frazier from Merck. Um, um, he's the CEO of Merck. Shout out to him, the black brother. He resigned from Trump's council. And that embarrassed Trump. That was one of the real reasons why Trump had to come out and say something with that half-assed condemnation because that brother, shout out to him. See, the, they, they had the brother on the Trump council, and they thought that he was going to be another Sheriff Clark, another Ben Carson, another Omarosa. They thought that he was going to be another Coon, and he's like, no, I'm cool. If y'all not going to condemn this white supremacist bullshit, I'm out of here. And that, and then Trump threw some shade at him. You know, Trump started talking slick shit about the brother. So that was beautiful. That was a beautiful thing. What's up, Kiki Naturalista? <clears throat> but understand the day of the coon is over. The day of the coon is over. They don't really need coons no more. Y'all saw what happened to Omarosa when Omarosa showed up to that um that event for the National Association of Black Journalists. Well, they they threw her under the bus. They like nah. They ran her up on up. They ran her out of there. See the thing is. The white supremacists, they don't really need their coons no more because now the white supremacists are being very open about their, their views. They're being open about their views, so they don't need a proxy no more. They don't need the Negroes to be their buffer and, and their puppets. They don't need to talk through their coons. They can openly say what they feel now, as we saw in Charlottesville. That's what they've always wanted to get back to, so they're back to that now. So people like Omarosa and, and Diamond and Silken, they're, they're struggling right now. And did y'all see, I posted the receipts 
of um, Diamond and Silk. They Diamond and Silk has been confirmed that they have been paid by the Trump administration because there's a list of itemized dis disbursements that the Trump campaign gave out. And Diamond and Silk, these two, Butter Biscuit, Aunt Jemima, is get all that Buck Nancy and Coonan. Build that wall, all that. Y'all know they only got $1,200. They got $1,200 for doing all that Sambo cooning. TJ, go back in the house, buddy. Go back in the house. Y'all go back in the house. Go back in. See, they figured out how to open the door. So, yeah, Diamond and Silk, they're getting desperate right now. Amarosa is desperate right now. That's why. See, the thing is, Amarosa, white people don't like Amarosa. That's the thing. She's a Sambo Manny Bedwinch coon, but white people don't like her. They, they remember her from the Apprentice days. And I remember when, when Amarosa, she, she's a flip flopper, and, and the white supremacists, they know that. When Amarosa was on Oprah some years ago, she's. She tried to play the black woman card. She was like, well, yeah, people hate me because they always hate a strong black woman. You, you dig what I'm saying? So she played that on Oprah, and they never forgot that. So they, they, they're they like, we can use her as our coon, but we, we know what she's really about. They despise Omarosa. So the thing is, Omarosa, she's a, a coon with no country, basically. You know, white people ain't bringing her in for no lectures or anything like that. As we see with the, the money that Trump gave Diamond and Silk, he, he, he ain't giving Omarosa that much paper. She must not be making that much paper. So people like Omarosa, they slowly try to slip back into black society to try to make good. And no, they shut her ass right on down. Shout out to Cheryl Lee Ralph. Cheryl Lee Ralph clowned her. So, you know, she trying to slip back over into black society. They're like, nah, no, 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 we're good on we're good on you. Yeah, she was on a TV One dating show. You know, that was um, executive produced by Trump, by the way. She's been on Trump's nuts her whole career. Her whole career has been a Trump dick rider. That's been her whole career. So people in, in black society are saying no to the coonery. And I, that's a good thing. Nigga, speaking of coonery, Tommy Sotomayor, Crispy... Ashy Sotomayor got the shit slapped out of him. A punch, he got punched over in Harlem. That's another coon. The coon money is drying up. The, the, the white supremacists, they ain't booking him on their little bullshit podcast no more. That's how he makes his little money. He makes his money catering and pandering to the white supremacist crowd, saying all of their racial shit for them. That's where he gets his little money. That's how he's been feeding himself for the last few years. Now that little money is drying up. He tried to slip back to a black event over in Harlem. And, and he socked him in his damn face. Ashe. Oh, the video. Oh, it's so funny. You don't actually see the video of the punch. You see like the aftermath. Because the punch was off camera, but you hear him in the back crying like a bitch. They stole on me, everybody. <laughs> they stole on me, everybody. Shout out to the brother, who, whoever did it. I don't know who did it, but shout out to him. Shout out to the brother who socked him in the face. I already knew. I'm like, why would you go to Harlem? I already knew. I, I've been to Harlem. And cats told me, nigga, when we see Tommy Sotomayor, we're going to whoop that motherfucker's ass on sight. So I already knew they were going to whoop his ass. I wasn't shocked. I'm like, nigga, you going to walk into an ass whooping? <clears throat> Was there a roach in there? Oh, it must be a roach in there. That's, a, that's one thing. They got a lot of bugs in here. Yeah, they're in there killing bugs. These Caribbean hotels, we having a lot of bugs in them, but... Oh, man, Crispy's so desperate. Yeah, this nigga was up at um, um, the breakfast club outside the building trying to get on. It was so fucking desperate. This nigga's so desperate for somebody to put him on and give him some shine. The white supremacist coon money is drying up. This nigga was outside of the 105.9 building begging 
to get on the Breakfast Club. It's the most pathetic, sad thing ever. Charlemagne, I think Charlemagne did like a Barnell Hill on that nigga and said, yeah, yeah, when you come to town, just call me. So the nigga showed up. So, I know Charlemagne, everybody. And they're like, no, nigga, you can't come in here. Charlotte, they know better than to have that coon on the air. They know better. They know having him on the Breakfast Club will diminish the brand of the Breakfast Club. It's a very bad look, so they're not going to have that nobody coon on there. Did he try to drop my name? When? When did he say my name? He always mixes my name, and he always used my name to try to come up. I mean, his claim to fame is getting clowned by me. That's his claim to fame, so he's always... That's how he... Um, Vlad tried to be slick and put him on because they were going to try to clown me, use my name to get him on Vlad. That's the only reason Vlad brought him up there, but I shut that shit right on down. Punked him out out here. And... But when old dude socked him up in Harlem, that nigga was crying like a bitch, didn't fight back. Are you serious, everybody? Are you serious, everybody? <clears throat> the nigga got socked up, stood there crying like a bitch. And what's really bitch made, then he got on the phone and called the police like a hoe. <laughs> 911, everybody. I'm in Harlem. They jumped me, everybody. <laughs> five, five, five. Allen Clayton Boulevard, everybody. I don't know the name of the street, everybody. The nigga called 911 after a dude socked him in his face. Anybody who follows that coon, shame on you. Anybody who follows a sorry bitch made punk ass coon like that, whose life mission is to take L's. He came out to LA, I punked him out. And that's the reason I didn't sock him up because he's a bitch. When I ran up on him, the, the look in his eyes was so moist and feminine and there were tears in his eyes. I'm like, okay, you almost feel pity for this nigga. I mean, he's, talk, he's one of those dudes, you talk a gang of shit online, you run up on him, he has tears in his eyes, he's acting like a bitch. He takes L's everywhere he goes. Any man, especially black man, who follows that type of nigga, I question your man. Yeah, and I heard it was a little dude who smacked him up. That's the funny thing. I heard it was a little dude, like a short dude who slapped him up. You serious, everybody? He stole on me. It's that he's trying to sound like a white supremacist. I got sucker punched, everybody. When you stand in toe to toe with a nigga and sock him in the face, they act like they got sucker punched. Man, people, man, the coon days are over. People are not bringing coons in their circle. Nigga, you are an enemy of black society. Nigga, y'all know I'm going to update the crispy nigga. Y'all know I'm going to upgrade. Up, I got to update the crispy game. Look out for an update pretty soon. You know I'm going to have an update of crispy biscuits. And check, crispy biscuits, I keep getting... That game is so fucking popular. It's like the num top 20 is in the top 20 in Thailand. Just these real random places where the movie, not the movie, but the, the video game is doing good. Who is that? The lady tried to see she, she said what? She can hear me? She, she was... Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, man, I'm see y'all in the hot little motherfucker out here. Oh, Paris Denard. Yeah, I talked about Paris Denard. He was on CNN cooning. Why does Paris... In Paris Denard, he's one of these so-called black conservatives. He's a coon conservative. He's not a conservative. He's just a paid coon. And he was on there defending Trump. You know, they got their coons. These are paid coons. And... Harris Denard looks just like Step and Fetch. It. I mean, literally, that nigga looks just like Step and Fetch. It. But this, that coon crispy just go around the country to take L's. And the thing is, 
what makes him so bitch made? You run up on women, you ran up on sisters. I I kick your ass, bitch. I kill you, bitch. This nigga done went to jail for beating up women. This nigga's life is just beating up women and acting like a bitch when he gets around a man. Then he said he yeah, he always lied about some chick he didn't have sex with. That's another thing. That's another bitch made move. Niggas lying on their dick. Niggas lying I I fucked everybody. I fucked the good everybody. <laughs> That's just coon, 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 crispy, dirty little coon. But then he got what he deserved. When you see known coons who are enemies to black society, it should be on site. Whenever they come to your town, the shit should be on site. You dig? I haven't seen the latest episode of 90 Day Fiance. Boy, so goddamn hot. Man, let me see. A lot of folks are calling. Let me take a couple of calls and see how this thing works out. What's up? Who's calling? That didn't work. Let's have somebody else call up and I'll see what it do. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, Christy, he's a, 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 a nobody loser coon. He's a, been a loser all his life. The nigga's never done anything successful. Ever. Everything in his life has failed. Everything. This nigga was a failure at birth. That nigga was a product of an affair. I talked to his family. So this nigga done made up a whole new identity. His name ain't no Sotomayor. He made up this identity that he's Panamanian. I talked to the nigga's brother. This nigga brother ain't, he said, Crispy ain't nothing, nothing about him from no damn Panama. That nigga's from Decatur, Georgia. His dad is from Valdosta or some shit. <laughs> Ain't nobody from no Panama in this nigga's family. His own brother said this. This nigga whole family knows he's a coon. Ain't no Sodomite. Ain't nobody from Panama. He was made up a bullshit ass identity. Nigga got a bunch of kids he don't take care of. Just a dirty low life coon. No, I'm not in Alabama. I'm in um um I'm in um St. Croix. The beautiful island of St. Croix. Yeah, the niggas in Thomas Harris. Thomas Jerome Harris of Soda Meyer. <laughs> Trying to get a Spanish name to sound more exotic with your little ashy black ass. <laughs> I'm Soda Meyer, everybody. That's the ticket. <laughs> I'm mixed, everybody. La <laughs> Pequente. Oh. IBM. I'm just black and mixed. <laughs> This little a nigga life is a fraud. <laughs> hey, you wonder why the motherfucker gets smacked up in the streets. Niggas ain't playing no games with these goofy ass niggas no more, man. As we shouldn't. Fuck that. We gotta shut bullshit down. We gotta stop. Look, these white supremacists are serious, so we gotta be serious. So we need a coon cleaning. Shout out to Sarnetta. Shout out to Sarnetta TV. Shout out to all them brothers. I got a lot of love for all them Harlem cats. I get so much love from them, Sonetta, uh, Red, Red Pill, Blue Pill, all those dudes. They roll out the red carpet. When I come out there, they show so much love because I got respect and love for those dudes. You dig? Look at Mateo. Look, what are my kids doing back there? Oh, yeah, he's desperate with attention, for attention. But family... Again, the way they're dealing with these white supremacist groups out here, they've deputized them. They've deputized these terrorist groups. So black people, we're going to have to deal with these white supremacist terrorists on our own terms. Because of what, look, I, I want to say this to black people, and I'm specifying black people, because the other day I was talking about our brother Marshawn Lynch, Marshawn Lynch took a seat. He didn't stand up for the national anthem, and I was commending him. And I was saying that all black players should not stand for the national anthem. Then I had a whole bunch of people jumping on my timeline. Well, all play, none of the players, white or black or any uh, any other color, no one should stand. It shouldn't just be. I'm like, look, I, look. My thing is, look, if y'all non-black players or whatever were gonna do it, you could have done it a long time ago. Now, I'm not waiting on y'all. You know, 
that's the thing. Whenever black folks start talking about doing something on their own terms, you notice other people want to jump in the mix. When black people start talking about doing something on their own terms, together as a group, you know, you see how other people try to crowbar themselves in the mix? Well, all of us should fight against it, right? All of us? I mean, if you're going to do it, do it. You don't need to be over here with us. Because y'all ain't, y'all taking too long. You're taking too goddamn long. So I'm looking at my folks and seeing what we can do. I'm not waiting on y'all no more. Fuck that. And we should stop. We, we shouldn't wait on them. And understand, these alt-right people, they've declared war. The alt-right and all these other white supremacist groups, they have started the Rahoa, the racial holy war. So they've declared war on us. So it should be on site whenever we see terrorists. We're not under any obligation, under no law or policy, to sit down and let white supremacist groups bash our fucking brains in. You ain't under no obligation to let that happen. And black folks, understand this. Right now, you are not, when you show up to these spots, this ain't a protest no more. Y'all showing up to protest and these people are showing up for war. So the protesting days are over. Protesting is done. The protest game is done. That shit is over. Protesting is done. It's over with. Ain't no more protesting. See, black people think it's all about showing up somewhere, getting beat up a little bit, getting arrested on camera, getting a couple of donations and getting some attention, that type of shit. No. Y'all got to stop thinking like that. Or my cousin got killed. Let me let everybody know my pain so I can get a settlement from the city. Those days are over. Black folks got to get off that shit. You got to start thinking in a warfare mentality to counter a warfare mentality. These people are coming at you on a war footing. And black folks out here dancing and having twerk contests and then you end up getting your brains bashed in because you think this shit is a joke. It's not a joke out here. You dig? Man. Rakim, stop it. It is burning up out here. Ah, damn, it's hot out here. But like I said, man, this is, these are not protests no more. Y'all stop showing up to protest. Stop showing up with, with props and tools. Like I said the other day, there was a brother at one of these protests in, in Charlottesville. He had, like, some chains around his neck and all that. This, this, this... People are just trying to show out for attention. We got to get off that need for attention bullshit. We got to get off that. This The attention game is over. Being desperate for attention and trying to be seen and trying to get some white mommy, white daddy sympathy. Kill that. Get that out your system. And start thinking in terms of freedom so these white supremacists won't execute all of us in a complete racial cleansing, which is where they're, they're heading with this thing. These people are on some racial cleansing shit right now. As you saw, law enforcement out there let those white supremacists run amok. As a matter of fact, those white supremacists out there in Charlottesville were fighting the police. They were pushing the police back. They let them run amok. But I will give it up to the spirit of old Google. It's my mom. Exiting. Yeah, I will give it up to the spirit of Ogun because Ogun, as a form of vengeance, made those police officers' helicopter crash. Two police officers died in a helicopter crash because they were monitoring these white supremacists bash people's heads in but didn't do anything about it, and somebody ended up getting killed. So the spirit of Ogun came through. That wasn't none but Ogun. You dig? So the spirits, the ancestors, the energy is telling us it's time to stand up. It's time to stop protesting. It's time to think in a warlike mentality in order to protect yourself from these terrorists. Because they're giving these terrorists the green light to harm and kill you. 
and non-racist white people, y'all can get in the mix. We can do your part. I commend you. Y'all do your part. And, and white folks need to be doing our part. He said David Duke said it's racial cleansing. And that's another reason why they chose that area. See, the white supremacists, they, what they really want to do. Okay, my mom stopped texting me. Okay, my mom is texting me and you can hit on the computer. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Sorry about this guy. All right. Man, I, I got some insect repellent on my ass. These mosquitoes ain't no damn joke out here. But what they want to do, y'all notice these. White supremacists for a long time, and I've been warning people about this, when they would try to go into these black neighborhoods to do these, when they would try to go into these black neighborhoods to do these open carry walks, they always try to be slick and slip into these black areas. Fortunately, some brothers in some of these cities were smart enough to say, no, you're going to get the fuck up out of here. You're not walking in this neighborhood. Shout out to Quan LX down there in Texas. They shut some of that bullshit down. I know going south before I melt. I know it's hot as hell out here. But down in Texas, shout out to the QP Newton Gun Club. They shut a lot of that bullshit down. They're like, you are not walking around in the Fifth Ward. If you walk up here with guns, it's open carry for us too. We're going to meet you with guns. Then the white supremacists cancel their bullshit. So what they do, they do these marches. They find places where they can pretend that there's some kind of... Um, symbolism, some kind of white supremacy symbolism, which that's part of it. But the real reason they went to Virginia was not because of the uh, Robert E. Lee statue and all that. That's just a little part of it. Understand, that's just a little part of it. The real reason they went to Virginia, and I want y'all to follow me, because they act like, because notice they were talking about, well, we're going to stop them from removing the Confederate monuments. But when they got there, they weren't talking about no Confederate monuments. They were talking about white survival and white pride and white supremacy. They didn't say one thing about no damn Confederate monument. They were out there bashing people's heads and killing people. So the march was not about no damn Confederate um, monument. That's just a proxy that they used. The real reason they went to Virginia out there in Charlottesville was because that area is an open carry state. That's an open carry area. So what they do, they have their marches and their meetings there in large numbers, and they have white militia groups who can walk around armed protecting them. That was the real reason why they had the open carry, uh, the, the, um, the, the thing out there, because Virginia is an open carry state. They didn't have it down in Texas because, and, and, and let me break it down, they also had it in that little city because the black population is small there. So they knew that they would be met with little black resistance. You understand? So they went out there because it was open carry and they chose Charlottesville, which is a small city, but the, the black population is not as big and they can carry their guns openly and the one or two few black people there, they can beat them up, which is what they did. But they're not, they wouldn't pull that bullshit in Texas because brothers in Texas are strapped. That's why they kept having to cancel the shit in Texas. They try that shit in Texas, they're going to run into a bunch of Micah Johnsons. You, you know what I'm saying? They know who to fuck with and who not to fuck with. They don't want to go to Texas and run into a whole, <clears throat> run into a whole bunch of Micah Johnsons. They know what happened the last time some shit popped off in Texas. <clears throat> so they want to go somewhere where the black population is kind of, you know, suppressed to a certain degree. So, you know, they're trying to get their weight up. And, and they, that's another thing. Cali, too. They ain't coming out to Cali with that bullshit either. Because it's not really, it's not open carry out there. You got to throw them hands. They ain't coming to Cali in no large numbers. They tried to, the white supremacist groups a couple of years ago tried to sneak down to Anaheim. 
They thought that they would go down to Anaheim, and Anaheim was a safe spot so they could do their little bullshit march, but they forgot. Anaheim, that's only 30 minutes from Compton. So the cats went down there to Anaheim and gave them that work. Brothers went down there to Anaheim and started picking asses off, beating ass before they even got to the deck, got out the parking lot. They know where to go and where not to go. Brothers did it right out here. See, brothers out here, I'm not out here, I'm, I'm in St. Croix right now, but in California, in SoCal, out there in L.A., brothers did an old school ambush on their ass. That's how you get these terrorists. Because see, what these terrorists do, they set up shop and get around police officers who are undercover white supremacists too, who protect them. And brothers caught their ass slipping real good in L.A. I love it. They caught them coming out the car. They didn't even get them a chance to set up. They didn't even get to set up shop. They just started lighting their asses up in the streets. That shit was hilarious. Yep, that eight exits up from the 91, nigga. Anaheim ain't far from Compton at all. Compton, Long Beach, it ain't far at all. That's just, you hit that 91. And you right there, buddy. They, they, they don't know. We travel in L.A. We ain't got no problem hopping in the car. Going to, going to the spot if it's something that's going to turn up. But the thing is, we got to start looking in terms of warfare and protecting ourselves in the midst of warfare. Study what happened in L.A. and Anaheim. I want Y'all need to go back and study what went down and how the brothers handled that shit. Because it wasn't even a whole bunch of brothers, but they shut the shit down so fast. <clears throat> they shut it down fast. And they ambushed their ass, which was good. Because, see, the white supremacists, they're ambushing us. See, we are out here trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the tanks and all that. No. The shit that they pulled out there in Charlottesville, they were ambushing folks. Ambush their ass back to make them stop. If we cannot get our law enforcement to do anything about these terrorists, you take it in your own hands and you stop terrorists by any means necessary, even if you have to ambush them. You are not in you do not sit up and let these terrorists target you and beat your damn brains in. Yeah, I heard they're gonna try to do something at Texas A and M. Yeah, I heard they're gonna try to do something out there in Texas A and M. My Texas people, y'all better be ready. You did. Oh, I heard this. <clears throat> they plan on some other marches sometime in, um, this month, August 19th, I heard, in some cities. I'm not sure which city. That's why I monitor them. you got to keep your eyes on these white supremacists. I monitor what they do. The Daily Storm and all these people. Because all of them follow me. They follow what I do and they try to sabotage my pages. That's why my, my YouTube pages keep getting taken down because I've been exposing them so much. And they've taken my pages down so that I could stop exposing them, but I'm not. I got other vehicles, and when I get the Tariq spot up, it's, I'm really going to go in. You dig? You stay outside of Philly and really parts of the city. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Daily Stormer. They, they got a couple of articles about me on the Daily Stormer. That was trending earlier because the Daily Stormer is a real big hub for white supremacist groups. And Google announced that it's not going to let them host on Google no more because of their actions. Because they were one of the organizers of the white supremacist march this weekend. Um, the Daily Stormer had like a checklist of weapons to bring, weapons not to bring. So you know, they're very instrumental in the white supremacist movement. You know, they write crazy articles about me. They call me a monkey on their website. So, you know, I'm on their radar. Richard Spencer is trying to speak at the University of Florida and they're going to probably give him the same work they gave um, the guy yesterday in Charlottesville. That white supremacist who organized everything, his ass tried to do a press conference and they put hands and feet on his ass. Shout out to them. The dude who helped organize the Unite the Right white supremacist rally, he tried to do a press conference like he's some kind of politician 
They're like, motherfucker, people just got killed and you out here trying to give a present. They ran his ass up out of there. They ran him up out of there. They put hands and feet on his ass. Jason Kessler. Yep. And Jason, y'all, and I, I posted some tweets. I've been exposing Jason Ke Jason Kessler since 2015. I, I, I post the receipts. I've been exposing his racism to people on Twitter for years. I've been I, I monitor these folks, man. I've been warning folks about these year, these folks for years. <clears throat> I'm sweating like a pig out here. Even the day before the woman was murdered in Charlottesville, I put up a tweet. Because I saw what was happening that night. These white supremacists were walking around with torches, yelling nigga. And I said, look, these people are going to kill somebody. They're setting it up right now. They're angling themselves. They're going to kill somebody. And sure enough, they did. I knew they were going to kill somebody. I tweeted it the day before it happened. Because they're emboldened now. That's their whole objective is to be able to kill people publicly without having to join law enforcement. And sure enough, they did. So I mean, a protege? I don't need nothing, man. I'm, I'm just another victim of white supremacy. I already got protégés. You all, other victims of white supremacy. You're my, you're my protégés. We're in the same boat. Now, thank you. Somebody said Tariq needs several proteges, and you are the you are y'all my proteges. All of you, we're in the same boat. That's why I don't do the whole black leader thing. I ain't no leader inside of a prison. What's up? Who's calling? You. What's up? Who's this? Hello. Hey, who's this? Hey, hey, what's up? What's up? What's up? This is, this is Ryan Cakes, man. I'm calling out of Jersey. How you doing, man? I'm maintaining, maintaining. Just, just a little comment on the comments that they're making about you being a race baiter. Yeah. If you're black in America, you ain't gotta put out no bait for the for the white supremacists to come attacking your ass. You already the bait. Yeah, absolutely. So it's not that <laughs> you can't be black in America and be a race baiter. Exactly. You're already the bait. Exactly. You're the basis of what the the whole the whole system of white supremacy is built on you yeah. and labeling you and branding you as black. So how could you be baiting them when you are the bait? And you were made to be by that system. Absolutely. Yeah, they love throwing that term out, race beta. Some people were calling me that today. Race beta means you're calling out their racism and the, the shit I'm saying is right. So that means race beta means stop looking at me, practice white supremacy against you. That's all they're saying. All right, but thanks for the call, yeah. brother. All right. Yes, indeed. How many folks in the room? I can't see. How many folks are in here? Woo, I'm going I'm to hop in the damn... When y'all see me, I'm going to be looking like Crispy Sotomayor. Because I'm about to hop in this sun, hop in this pool. But no, I'm, I'm not going to be ashy, though. I'm not going to be as ashy. I'm going to be lotioned down. How many people in the room right now? Wow, we got 500. Okay. A lot of folks in here. Let me show y'all my view again. Let me stand up because again, my leg is still hurting. Ah! Hold on one second. Let me show y'all the view that I got. It's very lovely out here. I'm on a, I'm on a plantation. Uh, the hotel is on a plantation. Oh, let me show y'all my view. Y'all see that? Hey. All right. Lovely view. Nice and tranquil. Hope y'all can see all that. And this is the beautiful island of St. Croix. All right. Hold on one second. Let me get back in the shade. Ah. Okay. No, not in Hawaii. I'm in St. Croix. That's in the um, U.S. Virgin Islands. I'm in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Yeah, it's hot than a month ago. Oh, man. It's very peaceful. 
It's real peaceful out here. Man. Yeah, nigga, I did the old man grown. I'm, I wish I could get a damn mobility scooter in this bitch. I need to get my old man on. My leg is hurting. This is a big hotel. So I need a cold drink. Oh, it's burning up out here. But it's pretty, though. It's nice. When I get in this pool, I'll be all right. I will be all right. You yeah, had to take me a little vacation before the kids went back to school. And plus, we're done with all the hard stuff with 1804. 1804 is pretty much done. It's pretty much done. You know, the hard stuff is done. So now, right now, it's just a lot of little tweaks with sound and stuff like that. But all the main stuff, boom, that shit is done. The, the hard part is over, which is the hardest part. When I do these documentaries, the hardest part is getting all the B-roll and historical pictures and videos. Because when you watch these movies, you understand there's images that go over everything you talk about. So that takes a minute, man. That's where all the time is. That's where all the time goes in making these movies, getting all those, like, you know, hundreds, even not even hundreds, like thousands of images and videos. And then we get pictures created, and then we got to buy licensing for pictures, then we got to buy licensing for B-roll, then we got to shoot B-roll footage. So that's the hard part right there. And you said I heard my leg break down, it's hilarious. Yeah, licensing and clearing and the whole thing. Um, Keith Boykins pulled um, Paris Denard's black card. Yeah, man, we, we, there's no safe place for these coons no more. Oh, Lord, was Alvina King, what was Alvina King talking about on Fox? She's such a, a mammy coonette and who, who rapes the name of Dr. King. They love putting her on there. Her views were so opposite of Dr. King's views, but her whole thing is, I'm the niece of Dr. King, and she's just spitting on that brother's grave with all of her goddamn coonery. It's, who's crying? Oh, I hear one of my kids crying. But yes, an utter disgrace. And I'm the, in the month of August, the coons have been taking L's. And again, I give that to old goon. Shout out to Ogun. Ogun has been so good this month. The white supremacists and coons are getting exposed and getting their just dues. But understand this. I want y'all to, to recognize something that, that we haven't been seeing. Just because you see some of these people who oppose Trump, who are calling out the white supremacists, watch their language. Because understand, these people are still on code. Understand many of them are still on code because they will call out the white supremacists, but they won't talk about punishing them. I have yet to hear anybody, any politician, any lawmaker, any police agency, or anybody talk about punishing these white supremacists in large groups, which are now acting as terrorist groups. When you plow a car into a crowd of people, you are a terrorist. After. You are an open terrorist. They're still not calling these people terrorists. When they planned that attack, that was a planned attack. These groups were out here beating people in the street and they ended up killing somebody and they're still not calling them terrorists. And you notice they're not using those all-in laws on them. Do you know down in Ferguson and Baltimore, they charge you as groups. There's people in Ferguson and Baltimore who are still in jail for protesting. I think they arrested about four people in Virginia at the white supremacist rally. I think they arrested four people and one of them literally had to kill somebody in order to get arrested. But you notice they don't, they're not using them RICO laws. They're not using them all in laws. The laws that they use on us, if a black person commits a crime, everybody who was with him, you get charged for the same crime. You don't even have to be with the person. If a black person commits a crime and you live next to that nigga, they'll find a way to charge you in that crime as an accessory. 
the dude who killed that woman in Charlottesville, he was with a whole group of people. They were dressed in the same outfit. They were part of the same organization. They were all beating people in the streets. And this fool ended up killing somebody, but they only arrested him. If that was a black group of people and one person killed somebody, that whole group would be indicted. They would do them like they did Bobby Smurda. Bobby Smurda is in jail based on some stuff that his crew did. And he's doing seven years. Oh yeah, Rich Piana. What's going on with white supremacist Rich Piana, the, the, the steroid using white supremacist who got, um, we played a video a few weeks ago of him going on his racist rant. He overdosed and he was on his deathbed. That ain't nothing but Ogun. That ain't nothing but Ogun. Ogun ain't playing this month. Oh yeah, Baked Alaska said that he might go blind in one eye. Baked Alaska is such a queen, drama, bitch-made dude. He ain't about to go blind. Baked Alaska, he, he's the white version of Crispy. Baked Alaska, and I was clowning them. What they do, they talk all this tough talk online, and then they show up to these protests, get beat up, get stabbed, and then act like victims. That's their whole shebang. Baked Alaska, he's the king of that, or the queen of that. So he... I saw the video where he got pepper sprayed. Let me let me see if I could download that real quick. Let me see if I could play it. Hopefully I got it. Hopefully I got it. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Hopefully I got it on this computer. Hold on one second. What? Uh, is this it? Uh, hold on. Let me see if I can find the video of Baked Alaska getting quote unquote maced. Hold on one second. Let me look at my computer. Uh, that shit is funny. All that yelling and crying he's doing, all extra and dramatic. Hold on one second. I might have deleted it. Uh, Hold on. Hold on. Y'all bear with me because there's mosquitoes biting me while I'm talking. Uh, am I still on the damn air? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Y'all bear with me. Bear with me. Bear with me. Bear with me. Y'all bear with me. I cannot find it. I want to find that video of him so called getting maced and crying. Hold on. Hold on. Find it. Uh, uh, what is it? Oh, yeah, I can't find it. I might have deleted it from this computer because I had it on my, um, uh, I had it on my, um, Twitter. I want to show y'all how fake he is with all that crying about he needs some milk and all over dramatic. Hold on, a lot of people calling right now. I'm trying to find this footage. I should have had it beforehand, but yeah, I can't find it right now. It is hot as hell out here. You all right, Taria? Almost, baby. What's going on? Y'all ready? Okay, yeah, I'm about to wrap it up now. The boys ready? Okay. What, baby? Look at my beautiful child. That's my oldest daughter. She's about to be a grown lady. Oh. Hey, sweetie. Okay. I can't find that. What's that? What the fuck is that clip? Okay. Oh, hold on, wait, wait. Let me, let me see where it is. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. One second. Let me see if it's over here. That is funny. Let me see if I got it. No, I don't have it. I don't have it on here. I don't have it. Come on. Yeah, I don't have it. Uh, 
Oh, I don't, I don't know. It's cool. But yeah, he was screaming and yelling like he needs some milk while he was filming himself. Just all over dramatic. That's his thing. To, to act like a victim so he could get money and act like he's been attacked for his views. Yeah, this real bitch made. Man. But yeah, that's his whole thing. He's being attacked. And he's the victim and then he gets sympathy from other white supremacists. That's his way of trying to galvanize support. Man. Okay, my kids are crying. Somebody said my daughter's fine. Nigga, shut your ass up. Okay, let me go. I hear my kids crying. They're ready to go swimming. What time is it, sweetie? Fourth? Okay, yeah, let's get in this pool. All right, y'all, let me get out here. Let me get out here and get this pool thing popping in the beautiful St. Croix. Um, I'll do my um, regular podcast on Wednesday. Hopefully, if Tariq Spot, the Tariq Spot website is popping, I can do a live stream from there, possibly tomorrow. So I'll keep you guys abreast on that. But for the time being, y'all need to take your ass to HiddenColorsFilm.com to get Hidden Colors 1, 2, 3, and 4. Go to 1804movie.com to check out information on the movie 1804 that's coming out. And I'm going to holler. Y'all follow me on Twitter so I can keep y'all up to date on what's going on out here in these streets. I'm about to give me a beverage. I'm hot as hell out here in St. Croix. All right. Y'all be good. And I'm going to.